Welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. So it's uh, been some time since I had done a video and a lot has happened with the comic book market in that uh, period of time. And it was about uh, three months ago or so I did like a market update video similar to this for uh, 9.8 comics. And we had noted some, you know, kind of renewed market weakness at the time. And uh, we're about three months after that video and I think prices are still dropping for a uh, 9.8 comics, uh, unfortunately. Uh, you know, there's maybe a mega key or two that you can point to that are kind of hanging in there. We'll go through a few of those. Uh, maybe they had bottomed about two to three months ago when things got really weak, but secondary key issues in the 9.8. Uh, you know, it's almost certainly in the last uh, two to three weeks or so, like each price is lower than the last one. So uh, we'll go through quite a few of those type of books as well. You know, one thing to mention, kind of easy to be negative right now, but for big you know, no-brainer, first appearance, key issues in the 9.8, you're still well above, like, pre-virus prices, so, like, early 2020, 2019, kind of fair value 9.8 prices. In most of the key issues, you're still well above those prices, so, you know, there's still a context that hopefully, as we go through each book, I can go through uh, some of the price history as we move through each one. But uh, about 25, 9.8, so um, let's have a look. These are all completed sales that I've just taken note of in the last uh, two or three weeks or so. Uh, so first one, a Flashpoint number one in a 9.8. This one's uh, first Thomas Wayne as Batman in this kind of alternate reality, which uh, kind of sets up the new 52 universe uh, during this period. So it was a pretty big uh, event when this happened. Pretty big first appearance as well. I know I kind of had my eye on this one as a pretty big Batman fan. And I saw this one sell for $255. Now there's the, um, I think it's like Batman Beyond Flashpoint comic books that have come out recently. I think there's a little bit of heat for this one. I think you wait six to 12 months, you'll probably get a better deal. I see this one in six to 12 months if it pops up on an auction instead of 255, it'll probably go for like 175 or 177.50 or something like that. You know, when, the, when there's no new comic books about Flashpoint out. So I'd be a little bit patient on a Flashpoint number one in, an, in a 9.8 if you like that one. Uh, next one, Fantastic Four, 243. Uh, so this is uh, kind of one of those secondary key issues that I was able to grab on a pullback recently. So uh, we'll talk about my price because it was one of the more recent ones on eBay. 280 US dollars. Not too bad. I saw, it was about a week after I had purchased mine, I saw a newsstand on eBay in a 9.8. A little bit of an off-centering, but still a pretty great looking newsstand for $349 that one had sold for. Uh, so uh, just going back like a month and a half, almost two months uh, uh, at a completed listing in an auction for a direct edition on this one went for $381.99. And this is one you go back about a year on when people were kind of anticipating the Illuminati and the Fantastic Four like coming out in the Thor movies and you know just coming out in the MCU. The comic book market was a lot hotter during that time. A few of these were over 500 in the direct edition and the newsstands were getting way up there. So this is just one. I think uh, John Byrne, one of the best artists from the 80s as well. This is like one of the classic John Byrne books to collect. And I think it's his best cover from his entire Fantastic Four run as well. So, you know, even if there wasn't any MCU Fantastic Four coming out, this one would just be worth it on its own. And, uh, you know, I got my mine at a 200, 280 US dollars. I think that's a pretty great price given... Uh, you know, the recent history of this book in the last year. And uh, it's always one I've wanted, but it was really hot. And uh, everyone was kind of anticipating Reed Richards and the Illuminati and uh, was waiting for that one to cool down to uh, grab one. So I was really happy to get the, that deal done recently. Okay, uh, uh, next one is an Invincible Iron Man number nine, the variant version. So yeah, this is... a. Uh, uh, you know, a newer key issue that got really hot. Certainly everyone was anticipating Riri going to be in a bunch of uh, MCU uh, content moving forward. Uh, this variant version had sold for $1,581. Interesting, this auction was on my comic shop. They do like in-house auctions right on their website. So I think that might have held the price back a little bit. This is a really good price if you, if you wanted this, you know, variant version, a pretty hard variant of a first full appearance of Riri Williams. 1581 I think is a pretty great price to aim for right now. Uh, I looked on eBay, 1989 one sold for about a month and a half ago. 
So this is a book I think is just trimming a couple hundred bucks, even though it is a pretty tough variant. Uh, so right around 1,500, I actually think, is uh, kind of the fair value for that uh, variant of Invincible, Invincible Iron Man number nine in the 9.8. Next one's a, a Wolverine number eight. This one is uh, kind of hanging in there, actually. I feel like there's probably some room for it to even come back in price, but it actually um, seems to be pretty strong. Saw one sell for uh, $321.50, but another one in a new case with the decal and everything for $455. So I think that's, that's a really good idea of the range of price on this one, um, $455 near the higher end, $321.50 near the lower end, I actually think a Wolverine number eight around that, you know, the lower end of that fair market value is a pretty great buy. Yeah, with uh, Wolverine and Hulk on the cover. Uh, this is kind of like a budget, somewhat affordable version of a Hulk 340. Um, yeah, so pretty cool nine point out. I do have that one uh, in a nine eight. Uh, so uh, next one is a, a Young Avengers number one. So this is one, yeah, I didn't really recommend it at all when Kate Bishop was in all the movies and just for me, it was hot at the time, and I, I wasn't sure about the staying power of like a Kate Bishop character. Now there's other characters that people are excited for. A Young Avengers number one in an auction selling for five hundred and four dollars. So this was one. It was all day over a thousand dollars, and even when it, you know, the Kate Bishop stuff came out, and after that it was like eight hundred dollars. Even to me, it, that felt too expensive as well. Like I didn't want to be a buyer at that point. At 500, you know, if you like this one, I think you can maybe start thinking about it now. It's really cooled down. So a Young Avengers number one in a 9.8 going for $504. Uh, next one is a, a Terminator number one, the Now Comics Terminator number one from 1988. First Terminator comic, first appearance of Terminator in comics, basically. Saw sell for a 178.50. Yeah, so this is one uh, just in the last six or so months. I saw them go for right around the $300 level, a little over, a little under, depending on the auction. Uh, so this is one I was actually watching and kind of hitting myself after the auction when I saw the 17850. I think this one's totally worth up to $200. It's uh, a Now Comics, there's not too many of them. I didn't look on the census this morning, but I think it's like a one of 40, like a really great collector item. And uh, at under $200, I feel like I should have threw in a bid. So $178.50, if you like a Terminator 1 in a 9.8, I think is uh, the price to aim for, pretty much. Uh, a cool one, the next one, uh, Detective Comics 478. This is the first appearance of the new Clayface. I did look on the census for this one when I had kind of watched this on eBay, and I believe there's like 20 or 30 of them in a 9.8. So it sold for $560. Yeah, this is in the 1970s, this book. Really cool one, kind of was thinking of maybe throwing in a bid, but uh, maybe a little bit too expensive for like an obscure uh, Batman villain key for me at, at, at this point in time. But uh, ended up going for 560. I thought it would go for a little under 500, so that was a little more expensive, but it is a great collector item on that one. Uh, I saw a New Mutants 98 sell for $1,677. So yeah, these are kind of 1,600 to 1,800, kind of depending on the centering and how great it looks on the auction and stuff like that. So a new Mutants 98 has been kind of just going sideways for the last six months or so. So that's, that one's been kind of hanging in there. Uh, next one is a pretty good value, I think, at this time. Uh, the Eternals, number one in, in a 9.8 from 1976. This is one, I think, as long as I've had the channel, I've, I hadn't recommended this one at all because there was always like the rumors of the Eternals coming out and to me like the Eternals weren't really going to hit that hard or, or were never that iconic. Uh, this book really went through the gauntlet. It was over 2,000 I think at one point leading into the Eternals movies. This one's selling $941.65. So to be honest this one's from 1976. If you like Eternals um, you know, you, I think you could pretty much get in there on this one under a thousand dollars. I think it's, it's a pretty good value and it's been much more expensive in the last two years. Uh, next one, uh, I did bring mine out, uh, Batman Adventures, Mad Love. Pretty great price in an auction I'd saw for this one, sell for a $441. And, uh, you know, when the Batman movie came out, all Batman keys were doing quite well during that time. And, this key and the Batman Harley Quinn with the Alex Ross cover, I was really surprised. Saw some sell for like 800. I think there were some rumors like Harley Quinn might be 
coming out in the next Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie or something like that. So that, I think, affected this book during that time. Uh, yeah, they were 800, uh, 441, though, this recent sale. That was uh, in an auction, kind of a pretty stealthy auction, but it looked really good with uh, good scans. Uh, it looked like a really good book. So I think uh, this one's totally worth right around $441. And yeah, I'd purchased mine, I think it was kind of early 2021, I want to say, for uh, just over $400. So yeah, they're kind of returning to about that price where I'd purchased mine. Great collector item in a 9.8, tough ratio, not too many of them as well. That's kind of my preferred secondary key issue to a Harley Quinn. Certainly Batman Adventures 12 is the one to get. That one's about you know, kind of 2,800 to 3,000 in the 9.8. I think I saw one sell for 3,000 in the last uh, week or so in a 9.8, uh, Batman Adventures 12. Next one, uh, Batman The Dark Knight Returns, number one in a 9.8. Sale price on this, 1,150 in an auction. We documented one, it was like a little over 1,200, and I thought that was a really good price. So it's kind of hanging around that level, maybe a bit of a haircut, but uh, this one looked pretty good in the uh, pictures as well. So yeah, if you want a Dark Knight Returns number one, that is one I absolutely recommend as a big Batman fan. Probably one of the best, maybe the best 1980s Batman comic book to buy in a 9.8. 1,150 I think is a, a price to aim for. Uh, Batman 404, the next one. I have, Yeah, I have kind of all these Batman ones, just too much to kind of bring out and show. But uh, Batman 404, 177.50, saw this one sell for. That's a great price. Uh, just, I really like this book. I remember reading this one as a kid and really loving it. This is one. I have uh, two CGC 9.8s and one CBCS 9.8. 177.50 is pretty much the price where I'd bought one of my CGC 9.8s in like 2019. Like this was a long time ago. So this is one of those secondary key issues that's really pulling back. Um, yeah, my other uh, 9.8 of this I bought, it was probably around 120 and that was a really good price at the time. The one uh, right, right around 177.50 at the time was kind of a full retail price. So now 177.50 is, is a, an auction price. This one was in an auction as well. And I think that's a great price. Yeah, they've been in the last six to 12 months seeing these kind of in the 250 range. So 177.50 is, is a kind of a re renewed haircut for uh, Batman 404 values in a 9.8, but actually one, if you're a Batman fan, I'd probably get in there and grab one. Certainly, I'm kind of biased. I'm a fan of that one. Uh, next one, uh, Batman 366. I got a couple of these in a 9.8 as well. One of my favorite 1980s Batman comic books, $264.99. That's a great price. In the last year, They've sort of gone either, that's near the lower end of the price that I've saw them go in the last year. I've saw a few of these sell just a little over 400 as well. I would say the fair value has been about 350 with this auction popping up though, going for 264.99. I think that, that's just a great deal. I got two of these in a 9.8 already. I had this one on my watch list. I was really just wanting to throw in kind of a, an under 300 bid and hopefully I would have won it and I probably would have. Uh, so but maybe I don't need a third. Uh, I think at $264.99, though. That's a great price for Batman 366 right now. Uh, next one's a Star Wars number one in a 9.8. In an off-white to white page, this one had sold for, but it, but it was in like a fire sale auction on eBay, so a good idea of the, the fair value for a, a Star Wars number one in the normal priced variant 9.8. Uh, off-white to white pages for $4,000 even. It ended up selling for in that auction. Yeah, and that's kind of right around, you know, the pricing that I'm seeing them go for. In the white pages, you're probably, you know, 4200 4300 or so for the white pages. And we've saw a few go uh, around that price in the last six or so months. So, that, yeah, this is just one of those, like, big mega key issues that's kind of going sideways. There hadn't, I'm not really seeing any renewed weakness in a Star Wars number one. So that is one that is kind of hanging in there. Uh, one in the off-white to white page going for 4,000 US dollars. All prices in US dollars, even though I'm Canadian. <laughs> uh, next one is a Darth Vader number three in a 9.8. Saw and sell in an auction for $307.88. And you know, like about two to three months ago on that price video, I'm pretty sure we documented a couple of these that maybe had even went a little under 300. So this is another one of those key issues that's, you know, very popular, first appearance of Dr. Aphra, kind of a no-brainer key issue. 
that I think has been kind of going sideways, like there's not any renewed weakness in this one, which is nice to see. Basically, yeah, with 307.88, and I would saw maybe three or four in the last few weeks go right around $300 on eBay. So that's basically the fair value, right around 300 And they've been there for, for a bit on a, a Darth Vader 3, which is pretty much kind of a no-brainer, uh, affordable uh, or semi-affordable, I guess, a Star Wars modern key issue to uh, think, consider in, uh, in the 9.8. The next one is, is in that basket, I think, as well. A Darth Vader number one, the uh, Alex Ross variant for a Darth Vader number one. So this one's cool. It's a uh, first appearance of the Black Curse Stan, who is kind of like uh, a, a Wookiee, like a, a, a type of Wookiee. I've never read this one, so I'm not too sure if he's like a villain or uh, on the, the, the rebel side. But... Uh, um, this uh, Ross variant, I think, is, is a cool one, and I, I do think this Darth Vader number one, it's going to be well collected over time. It's basically the first uh, continuous Darth Vader titled comic book, um, and uh, in this Ross variant, I believe it's a one for fifty Ross var uh, Alex Ross variant. This seems to be the one that you know collectors really go after. So I saw it in an auction sale for two hundred nine dollars and fifty cents, and uh, this is one you kind of see on eBay, and it's like. 500 or best offer like people are trying to get quite a lot more for this one but if it pops up in an auction like this one 209.50 i think that's a really good price yeah for over time i think this darth vader number one the first uh, solo titled darth vader comic in the tough alex ross variant that everyone likes right around 209.50 is going to be a really good price so um uh, yeah that's uh, the price to aim for i think on that one Next one, an X-23, number one, the Del Auto variant for X-23. This one, uh, pretty much right from the beginning, was just so well collected and absolutely exploded and a really tough one to find in the super high grade because I believe it was a one for 100 variant. Yeah, tough to find variant, $1,726. Yeah, well, like some of these modern, really tough variants aren't really my style of collecting, I guess, for 9.8 comics, like at, especially at this 1,000 type, you know, 1,700 type of price point. I would much rather look for something in the 1980s that's, you know, like a one for 40 or, you know, like a really great collector item that maybe I could get for like 700 or $800. Uh, just seems like a much better value than some of these modern covers that have great eye appeal and have a crazy cult of following that's willing to pay up for them. But uh, I'd prefer, yeah, something just really cool from the 80s. That's that's a, just a, a tougher collector item. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man 64. This is kind of a, yeah, a pretty great 80s key issue that uh, this one sold for $676. This could be, yeah, kind of a 1980s key issue that I, I would prefer more so than uh, that uh, X-23 Del Auto variant. Uh, $676. For a first cloak and dagger, I think this one's a pretty good value right now, and that's basically price to aim for for kind of a really nice centered one. Maybe you'd aim a little bit closer to 600 if the centering looked a little wonky or something like that, but that's a good value on a Spectacular Spider-Man 64 in a 9.8 right now. Uh, an Avengers Annual number 10, first appearance of Rogue and Madeline Pryor. Not one where I've really liked the cover that much, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I wish it was just an, an awesome cover and you know, big first appearances, so I, I would really kind of want it more at that point, but uh, this one's selling for uh, $951, and this was one, you know, it seems like just for the, a really long time, probably for about a year or two, it was, you know, 1300 and it would spike up to like, you know, even close to 2000 I think, there, and the newsstands were certainly all around 2000 for a, a really long time, so this is one that's cooled down. Hopefully Rogue or Madeline Pryor just get into the MCU X-Men looking awesome, and this would probably be a pretty decent buy under $1,000, one going for a $951. Yeah, one I'd, I don't really like. I'd prefer other X-Men books just because um, I don't like the cover on Avengers Annual 10. Uh, next one on X-Men 133, Uncanny X-Men 133. I'd prefer this book over Avengers Annual 10. This is a first solo Wolverine story with the great Wolverine cover. Wolverine fans just go after this one. This is one of those mega keys that's, like I would consider it a mega key and it, it's really hanging in there. Someone sell $1,530. Yeah, that, that, that's a, a good price. And I think, you know, maybe these were kind of flirting with the $2,000 level when the market was as hot as it was about a year, year and a half ago. 
So actually just a little bit of a haircut during that period is, is really good for, for books. Um, so X-Men 133 is, is definitely hanging in there. And uh, Raider, yeah, if you can get it under 1,500, let's call it, I would say that's a really good deal for a great looking one. In uh, direct edition, yeah, this one was a direct edition, 1,530. Uh, next one, X-Men number 130, first appearance of Dazzler. Cool cover on this one, $1,625. Yeah, this one's got a big first appearance, cool collector item. One of those, you know, key issues from the uh, John Byrne, Terry Austin, and uh, Chris Claremont era of X-Men. Yeah, so uh, X-Men 130, $1,625. And uh, Uncanny X-Men 121, yeah, I did bring mine out. Uh, in a 9.8, in an auction, sold for $1,800. $1,800. So this is one interesting, like, you know, I follow this one quite closely. And uh, in the, about probably about six months ago it was, I uh, saw one go for like $1,200 in an auction. And I thought, like, that was, that's a pretty good price to uh, get a tough collector item in the super high grade. So this could be one you know, in that kind of basket of mega keys that is going sideways or maybe it's bouncing back up from those two to three month old prices. Just a big, you know, key issue that's tough to get and collectors are going to want this one. So some strength at a 1,800 in uh, Uncanny X-Men 121. An uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 210 I saw sell. First appearance of Madam Web. I really like this cover. I kind of wanted this one in the past. Uh, sold for $979. Yeah, this was one um, that I kind of wanted, and then it really heated up. And I've always said, if it ever gets under a thousand dollars again, I, you know, it's it's one worth considering. But you know, there's always been kind of off and on Madam Web, like maybe she's going to be in MCU this and that. Uh, and this one was over one thousand five hundred at one point, but they had kind of pulled back to one thousand two hundred, where they were getting a little you know, uh, worth considering at that point, 979 now. So yeah, I'll probably start thinking about an Amazing Spider-Man 210. I really like the, the cover and uh, that could be one to buy on the pullback under a thousand dollars. A really rare one I'd saw sell, an Uncanny X-Men 221 in the second printing. Uh, this was distributed by like someone else besides Marvel, but uh, really tough to find this one in a 9.8 sold for $1,783.58. So uh, I don't really know any price history uh, for this book, to be honest, in a 9.8. So uh, take that for what it's worth, 1783 for that tough second print in a 9.8 for uh, first appearance of Mr. Sinister. Okay, last book is uh, one I, I ended up picking up and purchasing for a really good price, I think. It's uh, Batman, the official motion picture adaptation in the uh, kind of non-prestige version, because the, there's the prestige variant or whatever it's called. That one's kind of easy to find in a 9.8. You know, I've saw those over time sell for like 60 bucks in a 9.8, 70 bucks. But always kind of had my eye open for the um, non-prestige version, which is, which is tougher to find. Um, yeah, right around the Batman movie, quite a few of these had sold for 200. There was a seller that had one up for 200, kind of a flat buy it now. I had it on my watch list for a really long time, and I was like so close to pulling the trigger many times. But came across this one in an auction. 134.49. Yeah, so uh, the Batman movie came out. Batman books are cooling down a little bit. And uh, 134.49 for the kind of tougher to find non prestige version of the Batman 89 movie, I think is a pretty great deal. Uh, the, you can get one in the new stand edition. So this is a direct edition. So, you know, technically it's not like the toughest one to get. Uh, but uh, I really like this one around that 134.49 price. And uh, yeah, you know, a bit of a speculation likely with uh, those Batman 89 comic books had come out uh, last year and they were kind of a hit, to be honest. I think that universe is going to keep on going on. So this is kind of, you know, first appearance of uh, Michael Keaton, Batman and a Jack Napier Joker. Like maybe they just in the next Batman 89 books push Jack Napier really hard. And the first appearance of Jack Napier Joker, I think, is uh going to be well collected over time and I think over time this 134.49 price will uh, be worth it and I, yeah I think that's basically a price to aim for if you wanted that one in the direct edition yeah I was really happy that I think uh, I'm pretty sure I, my um, uh, bid was like 195 or something like I was expecting to pay 175 or something like that so uh, was great when that uh, <laughs> final sale 
or the final buy price came in at a 134.49. Okay, we'll leave it at that. So yeah, great to just go through some prices. And I think there are some mega keys out there that are absolutely hanging in there still. But uh, some secondary keys I think are really cooling off. You know, Fantastic Four 243 was a really, is a really good example of that. Like, okay, maybe not your, a huge first appearance, kind of a secondary key. It's cooling off now, but classic John Byrne cover, especially if they come out with Galactus and the MCU movies. I think this is, it's just going to be one to buy on the pullback under $300 on a Fantastic Four 243 and a 9.8. So, yeah, it's kind of nice to have some opportunities. Yeah, I'm, I've been like buying a little bit more maybe in the last month or so um, strategically, just picking off uh, again Fantastic Four 243 and the uh, Batman adaptation. And those kind of opportunities, I think, are out there. Um, but you know, it's almost worth it, even though, yeah, these secondary keys look kind of cheap. You always do want to make sure that probably about 75% of what you're going to buy should be like a big, obvious first appearance key issue because those just tend to do so well over time they're kind of no-brainers and you can spend so much time doing research and finding cool you know weird key issues but a lot of times those will just not do anything and then the obvious ones will just continue to kind of grind higher so yeah it's you know even though some of these secondary books are on sale right now still want to you know if you're investing in 9.8 comics like I like to and you know you have a long-term time horizon it, probably about at least 75% of everything you buy should be a big, obvious first appearance key issue. And, you know, we talk about those type of books all the time. Okay, we'll leave it at that, though, team. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll uh, see you on the next one.